Okay. Uh, the university. I go. Amen. The universities in Ghana are the highest institution of learning. Uh, and as the British bequeathed to us, uh, they did not come with technology aspect. They did not come with technical education. They came with the book, or what I would call bookish. That is as studying to become a clerk, a classical, I mean, reading law. Law was even an addition administration. This were the kind of so if you come out of such a system, sometimes it's difficult, if you are not employed, difficult to find a job. Right. Because somebody, administration, you have to get it, somebody's business to become an administrator or the state to do that. So yes, they, began, they, they left out with education, but even the beginning of education as it started was not a favor. It was a necessity. And the, 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 it was designed to favor them. You know, only men that came here as soldiers. And these were soldiers that were also serving time. So bringing them to Africa was like a punishment. OK, you are in jail. I'm taking to Africa to go and do this. So only men came. And as men, they don't come with their wives, so they need a woman. The first touch was people having affairs with the enslaved woman. That one, whether it was conscientious or not, how can somebody in change be consent to having sex with somebody that is? So they were. It happened. It just happened. So when, when that happened, pregnancies manifested. People gave birth. The ships came between two weeks and three months. That the enslaved people stayed in the dungeons at least two weeks and maximum of three, uh, uh, three months. By three months, the ships would have been sailed to the other side and returned. So pregnancies, people gave birth. And as they gave birth, uh, the coast of Ghana was referred to as the black man's, the white man's grave, because they were dying of mosquitoes, uh, other insects, fever, yellow fever, high fever, and then the rest. So, what they thought was, the children that came between the white man and the African woman, the woman, I mean, the child carries the gene from the woman. So, which is much more stronger. And also, the genes of the father, they think, will be loyal. So, they said, okay, why don't start? Let's give them education. So, they will augment the fathers that are dying, the white guys that are dying. That was the beginning of education here in Ghana. So, it wasn't like, oh, let's improve on their lives. It is, was something that will help them. So, when that happened, they converted some of the warehouses. Some people call the dungeons into, the, the, no dungeon was converted. It was the warehouses that were converted into classrooms. And they educated these people. Remember there were also some people that, a, a local that was working with them. So also, they also sent their children. Then when they realized that the classrooms were becoming fuller and fuller, they invited, the British would invite the Anglican Church. The Dutch invited the Methodist Church. The Dutch, they then invited the Presbyterian Church. Then the church came, took out the schools from the dungeons, and planted them on permanent grounds. That was how education started in Ghana. Education started in the castle schools, what were referred to the castle schools. Now, education got spread until about 1948, the British established this university, University of Ghana. But I told you that the administration was on a high ground, 
and the whole of our Christ on the lower plane, so we call it the heel of knowledge. Le Gon. Le Gon, the heel of knowledge. Now, this university has between 20, 30, 38 to 40,000 students. And on your left hand side, the buildings you are seeing, these are called the International Students Hostels. Just short ish. I S H A. I S H A. Ish. I S I S H. Ish. That is the International Student Hostel. This university also has the highest number of international students on SJ grounds. Folks, the trees you see, the greenery you see here, is a particular tree called the neem tree. Neem tree. Neem tree is a very medicinal plant or tree, resistant to harsh weather conditions. So mostly it is found in the coastal savanna and the Guinea savanna areas where the weather condition is a little bit harsh or oh, hotter. Uh, neem tree has antifungal, bacterial, viral, bacterial diseases. I mean, I mean, cure for, for, for all of those things. So when we were kids, growing up in the north, where you don't have access or there were not even existing toothpaste and toothbrushes, that was what we used. And when you are sick, just harvest the leaves, boil it, drink or cover yourself with a blanket and stir so that it enters your pores. Then you can keep some and drink. It's bitter, but if you drink it, then your fever is gone. Your malaria is gone. And this now, why do you cover yourself? You cover yourself. So that the vapor will enter your pores. Yeah. And the bigger trees on that form, the avenue here, are called are the mahogany. Oh, yeah. These are mahogany, the African mahogany tree. Okay. I have some. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is the University of Ghana. But when we attained independence, we realized there were defects. Yes because just studying to become classic, who would do the jobs in the factories? So we established, Kwame Nkrumah established the University in Ga and Kumasi called Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. He didn't name it after him. It was U.S. The University of Science and Technology. Uh, later on, we made it a University of Science and Technology. Uh, a typical hall of residence is what is to your, to your left. The university was built with a Japanese architecture. And the colors is what you see, orange and white. And with a Japanese architecture especially the the administration the central administration as we go closer and also the library as we go closer later on this is a public university you can read medicine here law business single subject classic performing arts african perform i mean african culture Culture studies, single subjects, uh, agriculture, bot uh, botany, zoology, and what all the courses they do. The cost of tuition. You don't pay for tuition. We don't pay for tuition government pays for your tuition. So that is why whatever course you do, if you are between the age of 18 and 40 years, you are supposed to do what we call national service. I guess community service is to do, you, you, pay, you pay for your crime, right, or offense, but it's, it's something like that. They push through to somewhere, you will go and work and pay, I mean, for the government. 
for free for the government, but they deal with this. That's a library called the BAM Library. So I left. And this place is a, it's a garden. You can just get up. I mean, people come in to walk around and the rest. Yeah. That's a BAM Library. Followed by the School of Business. University of Ghana Business School. There's, they have since built a bigger one outside the main campus on the other side. But uh, this is the University of Business, uh, Ghana Business School. Is that near the hotel that we chance? What? Mm -hmm. I saw a sign that said University of Ghana. The first day, yeah, what's right? Quack, what's right? Yeah, when we're going to Abri to yes. two the other day, yes. we drove past it, yes. Okay. The various the tuitions like we're talking about, you don't pay for your tuition, you only pay for academic facilities, user user facilities like library, I mean library, uh, laboratory, the halls you stay in, you pay for utility, electricity and water, but these are set up. But if you are reading medicine, and I'm reading if you are reading medicine and I'm reading humanities our cost will not be the same because you your risk is so high you can break some laboratory equipment mm. than me mm. so the payment for uh, for the by people who, who read medicine is higher okay. but I don't think for medicine a year you will not pay up to five thousand dollars equivalent wow. it's not it's not up to that very far less than that yeah five thousand dollars a year for medicine yes that is Vandal city to your left yes you heard the name Vandal V-A-N-D-A-L this is not the destructive Vandals okay these are constructive Vandals <laughs> This is our first trip from Fahazim. I have blocked up. So this is the main central administration. It is coming up to your right. This is the main central administration. This is what gives you the, the, the university the name Le Gon. Le Gon. That's the main administration to your right hand side. Okay. Here you call uh, university teachers, professors, we call them lecturers. Lecturers. The university has huge tracts of land. Very big land. And uh, facilities now that are coming up on the right hand side area, these are the, I mean the bangalows for the various university workers, teaching and non-teaching staff. So done by yeah. reminder ATM. Yes. Yeah. And then I want to find out how many people want to use ATM. One, two. ATM three. ATM four. ATM four. Four go in. Okay, from. Thank you.
trees that form the avenue, some of them have the back side very rough. The mahogany is also medicinal. The back of it, you will harvest it and put it in a, a very strong alcoholic drink in this country and gives you bitters. It's good for men. And also natural thorny. Uh, give you the strength of a warrior. Aha. Uh -huh. I guess so. <laughs> so this is a guest center for the university, for the Avistan lecturers, and also some students that are staying short. Our uh, universities organize study abroad group for the uh, students that are staying shorter for like two weeks, three weeks. Then you can, yeah, you can rent or you come stay there. The universities, as they were built, were so far away from town, so they needed a uh, teaching facility in the teaching facility for their kids, teaching both teaching and non-teaching staff. That's it. I saw this, I said it to her. Maybe she said it's okay. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 you